Hello everyone, this is Dr. Krishdil from Om Yoga and Ayurveda Clinic and today we are going to meet a wonderful lady from Adelaide. She has done masters in yoga. She has helped her to calm down and process the loss in her life early in 2003. After that she has decided to learn yoga and help more and more people in the world to calm down. And that's where she has done an MSc. After that, um, she is running uh, yoga classes since last three years and um, in Adelaide. And uh, now she is with me. So let's welcome her. Yeah. Hello, Vani. How are you? Hi, Kushi. I am well. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. How is Adelaide at the moment? Adelaide is good. Little cold and uh -huh. uh, rainy, but uh, we needed some rain. We oh, the yeah. starting of the winter was very dry, so ah. we had no rain. We needed some rain, so it's raining, which is good. Good. And mm. uh, what do you like? <laughs> uh, what what makes you to come and uh, settle in Adelaide? Uh, actually, I got my uh, state sponsorship from South Australia. Right. So that's how I ended up coming to Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Initial plan was that, okay, we spent some months in Adelaide and see how it's going. And then we might move back to Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane. But uh, we loved Adelaide so much that we stayed back here. <laughs> oh, that's good. So mm -hmm. uh, what makes you um to learn yoga or teach yoga uh, so uh, my inclination to yoga started uh, long back uh, as a kid also i was always very keen in you know imitating postures especially that time it was very popular that the celebrity star rekha if you know she does yes. yoga and in, in newspapers and magazines, we used to see her pictures in yoga poses. And I used to get very, uh, you know, excited to see that and trying myself. So that that that's a little bit of my memories there with the yoga postures. And also, uh, I am born in a Brahman family. So lots of chanting and scriptures reading was inherited in the family. Like my grandparents always uh, telling me the stories from Ramayana, Gita, Mahabharat, um, as you must be aware of it as well, that it's it's just a general yes. course of action in the family lineage where Absolutely. they try to teach all this stuff with the, uh, with kids. So uh, I was very inspired by the chanting somehow. So I used to learn mantras very quickly. Mm -hmm. I still remember I was very little and I used to chant whole um, uh, Hanuman Chalisa. So my mother used to be very proud and everywhere she's taking me, oh, you, you chant the Hanuman Chalisa in front of everyone. <laughs> so she used to like, you know, yeah, my kid can chant the whole Hanuman Chalisa. Yeah. So she yeah. used to uh, make me chant in front of my relatives and friends. Uh, so that's how I remember a little bit of my inclination towards the chanting, but that was just like a seed. And uh, then when I was growing up, actually, I saw lots of suffering for my mother's health. Uh -huh. uh, she she was quite uh, sick throughout her life. I mean, what what is whatever is in my memory. And uh, she ended up having liver cirrhosis at the age of uh, 45, 46. Oh. And by the age of 48, she passed away. Wow. So that was quite uh, challenging uh, for me to see my mother suffering. And But if you can, you might be able to relate it that that generation was not very well aware of the physical benefits of yes. exercise, diet, nothing. No. They just dedicate their whole time to their families and Family. kids and not taking care of themselves. So that really uh, shook me up and I thought, if it is genetically, I am not that strong. I have to take care of my well-being. And then I took uh, yoga seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in um, graduation first year and I joined a yoga ashram nearby. Mm -hmm. 
and I started going there for uh, with my graduation, which was in nutrition and dietetics. So after three years of practice with them, which was in 2003, they mm -hmm. suggested me to actually go for the professional training, more professional training and uh, pursue my path as a yoga teacher. Wow. So Guruji guided me to go that and go to on, onto that path. And uh, because they could see the changes in my mental well-being after losing the parents, how I could recover from that trauma and um, from being very introvert, I became more confident and mm. open and um, my studies were going well as well. So they said that you can actually share the same experience with others as well. So 2003 is the year when I took it seriously from there and I then continued with my post-graduation MSc yoga therapy from Manipal University. Right. So uh, what I understood is someone has a loss in their life mm -hmm. and uh, that guide her entire life. Yes. And now <laughs> a person is teaching uh, mm -hmm. to others how to come out from the trauma, trauma. and how to heal themselves. How to heal themselves. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yes, of course, like and also a message that loss is not the end of anything it can be beginning of something as well right um, it's just okay. that where we want to keep our focus and how much we provide opportunities of ourselves to heal and overcome that right so it's it's wonderful line i i would say it's wonderful wisdom that <laughs> end is not an end it's uh, starting from something else as well <laughs> <laughs> right. So since 2003, today is 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes you to just keep going on on this path? What have you done? What have you achieved during this time? Um. Yes, actually, the answer, I don't know myself. I feel oh. it's, it's the um, it's the motivation of of the benefits of the yoga practices which I received in my life. And I, whenever I see the vulnerable people around, I feel if I could do it, you can also do it. Like, you know how the Indian cultural system work with the women, you know, as they're growing up, uh, they want to settle them for the marriage. They want to force them for the marriage if they want or not. Everything is done by the age bar. Like, you know, this is your age and this should be done. This is your age and this should be done. Yes. So at least, at least until our generation. Now the next generation is little it's bit completely more different. <laughs> different. But until our generation, I think you can yes. relate. How I would say uh, Gen X, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. A so, 80s are like that and then like, 90s yeah. and after that a yes. little bit changed yeah okay. uh, so uh, crossing over all those barriers of uh, what society has put as a uh, woman should do is was not easy for me I I fought many many fights <laughs> And uh, I was working in New Delhi in gyms as yoga teacher, as a fitness instructor. That was another like, you know, barrier I was crossing that time. Women were not in the gyms. You won't see any women, even yeah. the clients were, most of the clients were male. There yeah. were less women and more men. Especially in India, there is a different yeah. scenario for sure. Yes, and especially a yoga teacher coming to the gym was like really out of something. Out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely uh, different. So I crossed all those barriers that no woman can be inside the gym also. Women can be in the corporate fitness centers as well. I work with corporates as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think and all, all this uh, motivation and energy was coming from my that inner love for yoga, which I actually realized quite later in life. At the beginning, it was all about earning bed and bread and surviving. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not leaving that path. However, lots of people suggested me when I was in my mid-20s that are you going to just continue with yoga teaching or you have any other plans to plans. do 
प्लान्स टू डू एम बी ए और एम टेक और डिफरेंट एजुकेशन एंड बिकम समथिंग एल्स एंड देन आई थॉट लेट्स सी लेट्स लेट्स टाइम डिसाइड फॉर मी इफ समथिंग एल्स इज देयर देन आई विल डू समथिंग एल्स and since i moved to australia in 2015 actually i became full time yoga teacher as a freelancer which was not easy you can uh, again relate it that you know when you are a new migrant you have lots of challenges yes. so i would uh, really uh, mention that that my partner my husband really became a good support for me and uh, i had no pressure of that earning and stuff where i could pursue my passion so it is little bit of everything my circumstances how i took charge of my own life from the age of 17 18 mm. uh to uh you know sticking to the path i loved for my own fitness for my own well being yeah and uh, also a little bit support from the family that's great that's great mm. so in your um understanding what do you think how a person become yogi that's a big question actually <laughs> because i am not at this stage nowadays as you see that anyone who practices yoga starts calling them yogi but mm. due respect to the lineages and due respect to the yogis uh, yogi is only one person who realizes the truth and who realizes the god or who realizes um the self realizes person is the only person who is yogi so Not so yogi. in that case what do you think what is yoga yoga is purely a spiritual science however with most of us including myself it starts with the expectation of getting good health and well being physically mentally emotionally i would say yoga practices really really helps in emotional balance because i found myself emotionally balanced in all the situations right. which has again a big factor in pursuing as a yoga teacher career because when you have emotional turmoil if you disbalance yourself you can't go out and teach it to others and we all face you know adverse situations in life Absolutely. life is all about having <laughs> those that life, life is like a seesaw ups and downs yes. is always there exactly yeah. so if the in that seesaw you are sitting and if you just fall then you can't really go out and give it to others so emotional strength and balance yoga practices certainly bring into you so coming back to your question which is uh what you sorry i what, you, what is yoga yeah what is yoga so uh, i mean i won't say that it is totally uh, physical exercises or fitness it is a component it is having the component of it because body is considered in yoga practices as a vehicle hmm. and which which takes you to the goal so the goal needs to be clear which is living peacefully living calmly living lovingly living in in a what you say um living in union with everything which is around you like you know not not separating right. yourself uh be becoming the part of that that nature that creation mm. you know and uh, of course that's the goal but it starts as a first step as physical awareness physical well being mm. and it takes you to deeper level with with the time you grow there right So, only very few certain lucky people like vivekanand swami vivekanand then oh yes people you know have this seed from the childhood where they know everything <laughs> but for general people like us we have to walk our path yeah but i think what i uh, saw in vivekanand's journey as well that mm-hmm. he he was in search of guru mm-hmm. so uh in my term of um, understanding is each and every one who is anyway born with those kind of seeds they need someone to someone. guide the path guide the path yeah. absolutely so um in emotional journey as i said um would you recommend any kind of uh, remedy or food or any recipes to just calm their mind or settle a down 
I, I would uh, highly recommend people to do the breathing practices mm -hmm. like Kapal Bhati, Anulom Vilom, Humming. All these practices really help. And if they have time, then certainly just drag yourself to the yoga class. That's it. That is what you have to do. Rest yoga will do for you. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So there is no any food articles or any tea or those kind of things you are giving when they are upsetting or not having any motivation to come to the class or anything. Uh, recipes, usually I ask them to have turmeric milk mm -hmm. because that really helps to uh, reduce the inflammations if they have due to arthritis or anything mm -hmm. and also help with the sleep if they have any problem in the sleeping and in the night just before you go to sleep, warm up cup of milk with the turmeric but nowadays people have a vegan lifestyle as well. Yes. So then I suggest you can have almond milk or soy milk or whatever you can take. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, because we have long winters here mm -hmm. uh, in Australia, yeah. five months, six months of cold weather. So I always tell them to give emphasis in more and more on the ginger, lemon, tulsi tea. Mm. And you can, now nowadays you just get the sachet and as many times as you can have it, it's good for your whole uh, system. So I give emphasis on suggesting on the uh, teas in winters and also turmeric milk. But if it's warm weather or if it's uh, different uh, weather, according to weather, sometimes I tell them how they can keep themselves cool, how they can keep themselves warm so like sea semi seed i highly recommend them in winters to have it in different ways whatever ways they can have it right. and um, so little little tips um i'm not very great professional i mean i have dietitian and nutrition uh, degree as a bachelor yes. Yeah, but uh, you know that system is absolutely different than our <laughs> Ayurveda system. Yes. Yoga but, system. Uh, what uh, my understanding is, um, Ayurveda and yoga is both are ha going hand in hand. And mm -hmm. um, during my journey in mm -hmm. this field, I have done uh, naturopath in nineteen ninety five. So mm -hmm. beforehand, um, nineteen ninety three. So nineteen ninety three to the twenty twenty three. 2024 um i found like it's all like yoga ayurveda naturopath everyone is just uh, left I each see, other and uh, whenever it's needed uh we can say like a prana is the base mm -hmm. of everything Correct. so prana has to flow flow absolutely and for that uh, we need uh, some kind of um space in the system so how we can create the space in our system that is more important either either you can do with the diet either you can do with the tea drinking either you can do with the breathing practice that is what my understanding is absolutely so thank you very much for today uh, it is really wonderful to talk to you, Vani. It's been a long, long time. I would like to do. <laughs> I would like to talk to you. And uh, what would you like to say at the end of our session to li our listeners or watchers? <laughs> um, just keep going. Keep going. Because, uh, yes, challenges will come. But this is, as a human, we have this potential to force or to push ourselves um, to keep going. Whatever path you choose, whatever you are doing, what I mean to say here is keep going is not that everyone becomes millionaire or achieve big things, nothing like that. Yeah. What a simple thing, go for a walk, go for a yoga class, mm -hmm. speak to a friend, chat. So that is what I mean from keep going, that just in your life as you normal, um, don't let the situation overpower your mindset or mental health. Mm. You have power to overcome everything. Wow. You <laughs> have power to overcome of everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is really great. Uh, thank you so much 
And uh, what are you doing in um, Adelaide? Or are you having a online or offline? What are the services you are providing right now? So right now I'm running a yoga studio in Torrenceville, Adelaide. Mm -hmm. um, I have two rooms in that, so two studios in that. And that's my full-time work right now. So just mm -hmm. run that studio, provide yoga classes. I have also staff who is coming and teaching for me. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, but all the classes are also live streamed. So if someone is in different city and still wants to continue the practices, mm -hmm. they can join the live stream classes as well. Right. So live stream is on YouTube or Facebook. No. How does it work? Zoom. So Zoom. they have to go to the website and book the live stream class from the timetable. Right. And then Zoom link goes to them. Correct. Cool. All yeah. right. So for our watchers and listeners, if you would like to learn from Vani, you can uh, search her. I will keep all the description in the below so yeah. that you can search her. And she is anyway a big, big person in Australia nowadays. So oh, anyway, you can find okay. on Google as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. Pujil. I'm just uh, living a simple and running a simple studio. It's called Yoga Spirit. All right. So yes, I can see here Yoga Spirit Adelaide, uh, Australia. So Vani Shukla is her name and you can anyway Google. Um, and we met her with our common friend. And since then we become a friend as well. Yes, so guys. thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you for the chat. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Same here. Thank you.